Good evening and welcome to MTV News Update for today, Friday, April 27, 2018. In the news tonight, single-use plastics to be banned by 2021. Three cups transferred following the compromised theoretical driving examination. Fisher folks must not dock boats at the Hope Relief Outfall Channel, affirms Minister Holder. And in court, a vagrant gets six months for stealing a weeding machine from the Guyana Police Force. With the details of these and other stories, I'm Ashley Scotland. Thank you for joining us. We start tonight's newscast by telling you that the government is staying on its proclaimed path to ensure Ghana becomes a green state and is doing whatever it can to ensure this is realized. It is against this backdrop the Minister of State affirmed that by 2021, single-use plastics will be banned. Lashana Gomes Cornelius opens tonight's newscast. During the post-Cabinet press briefing held earlier on Friday, Minister of State Joseph Harmon announced that government will take the requisite measures to implement legislations necessary to monitor the usage of single-use plastic in the country. Single-use plastics are items such as plastic bottles, bags and straws. It is proven by world scientists as the number one threat to marine life when carried out to the sea. Such plastics pose as a direct threat to marine life when animals such as sea turtles, whales and other types of fish or even seabirds either swallow or become entangled with such plastics. According to Minister of State Joseph Harmon, Cabinet has agreed to discuss the damaging effects single-use plastics have on the environment and find ways to address it. It was noted that the theme for Earth Day 2018 was ending plastic pollution and that statistics had been provided which indicated that the world is inundated with plastic that had become a waste disposal nightmare and which threatened those ecosystems that are essential to the well-being of our planet. It was also noted that Guyana was not exempted from this problem caused by the indiscriminate use of plastic and the inefficiency of its disposal. Further, Minister Harmon revealed that it is hoped that by the year 2021, Guyana would have a total ban on the usage of single-use plastics. This, the minister says, will absolutely coincide with the government's vision of transforming Guyana into a green state. Cabinet agreed that the matter had to be addressed if we were truly committed to the tenets of our green state development strategy and to making our contribution to the preservation of a healthy global environment. It was further agreed that the government would adopt and institute measures to minimize the use of plastic and propose appropriate legislation to give effect to those measures. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Three cops have been removed from traffic headquarters following a breach of the standard operating procedures of the learner driver's examination. This comes after 200 scripts were handed in, but only 106 persons sat the exam. Let's hear more from Nikhil John. The recent irregularities that were uncovered following a theoretical driver's examination, three police officers have been transferred. Acting top cop David Ramnarain has confirmed that the three ranks have been transferred. Ramnarain says based on initial investigation, those three ranks have had a significant part to play in the compromised examination. And so they have been removed from traffic headquarters. All three were stationed at traffic headquarters and they have been removed from there. And as many more that will have to be removed as long as this investigation unfolds and indicates so, that is the course of action we will have to take. I don't have that information at my disposal, but there has always been suspicion, a high level of suspicion that why would you take the risk of getting involved to that extent if they weren't a financial consideration? But I'll leave that as the investigation unfolds. Ram Narayan says the Cops on Faith Community Network partnership with the force is invaluable. He noted that there are several projects and initiatives that the network is involved in 
and continue to play a major role in assisting the force. We have the Guyana Police Force Fallen Heroes Foundation, Inc. We have them assisting us in cases of attempt suicide. We have them assisting us with uh, what we would term deferral from the criminal justice system, that is juvenile force offenders for minor offenses. They provide counseling, they provide mediation, they provide much needed advice and guidance. They provide support in cases of victims of serious crime. They invigilate the theoretical examination and they do some work on the practical aspect of that examination. And um, they have formed some very strong and I know for sure lasting partnerships with the Guyana Police Force. The force is investigating what may have led to the breakdown of the standard operating procedures on April 12th at the Austin Felix Police College. The force said the learner driver's theoretical examination had irregularities. In a statement, the force said 207 scripts were received at the end of the examination. However, only 106 persons sat the examination. Those persons who wrote the test on that day will now have to wait for a next date to rewrite the examination. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The Ministry of Agriculture has made it categorically clear that they will not commit to the use of Hope Relief Outfall Channel by fisher folks as it sparks a security nightmare. Find out more in this Sandy Ramatar report. Minister of Agriculture, Noel Holder, says the difficulties stemmed from fishermen docking their boats in the Hope Canal all hours of the day. This issue started last year and is a serious security concern, said Minister Holder. The passage of fishermen, and who knows, perhaps other persons of questionable character, at varying hours during the night, has caused a security nightmare at the site and has resulted in numerous confrontations and threats between the site security and the fishermen. Another issue is the use of vehicles by fish traders to traverse their catch from the site to their markets without authorization. Holder pointed out that the site is equipped with a number of expensive movable materials totaling $43.7 million. In this regard, the Ministry of Agriculture is reluctant to expose the site for fear of losing items, explained Holder. As such, fisher folks have been advised to return to their traditional site at the Hope Drainage Outfall Channel. Mr. Speaker, for the benefit of the, for the greater good, we cannot permit the use of this outfall channel by the fishermen. We would like them to revert to the drainage outfall channel where they have been in occupation from time immemorial. Thank you. Holder has also assured fisher folks that there will be continuous cleaning of the Hope Drainage Outfall Channel. This is facilitating the clearing of silt to accommodate the docking of boats by the fishermen. Sandy Ramutar, Frem TV's News Update. More news still ahead, do stay tuned. At Optic Vision Care, we value the power of your sight. And with our team of eye care professionals, you'll be in good hands. Come experience our comprehensive eye examination using state-of-the-art technology and specialized diagnostic equipment at four convenient locations in Mahaika, Grove, Giftland Mall, and East Street. At Optique, we care, you see. Call us today, 227-7744. Bushy Park Beach Marika presents Labor Day Beach Party on Tuesday, 1st of May 2018 at Bushy Park Beach Marika. Come enjoy a well-stocked bar and music by Notorious Sound System on the holiday. Let your hair down. Come out on the holiday and let's have a blast at Bushy Park Beach Marika on Tuesday, the 1st of May, Labor Day, as Bushy Park Beach Marika presents the Labor Day Beach Party. Compliments of Ellis Haridat Sawmill, Beach View Hotel, and Banks Bear. Tell me a secret now. Nah. Follow me 
gonna tell you. <laughs> our secret. So the guy tell you, I think it's our secret. Miko, follow And him it catch you. The secret is out. Tayo's Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs, electrical and household appliances, clothing, cell phones and accessories, and much, much more. Oh my God, so much in this store, guys. Me Tayo's Future Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit, no me know the secret. I like all you know the secret. Everybody know the secret. <laughs> Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sales service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. Here's the news update, welcome back. The Ghana Sugar Corporation has over the years been criticized by its workers and their affiliate body, the Ghana Agricultural and General Workers Union. The criticism is intensifying as the persons receiving pension from the corporation took to the streets to voice their concerns over the new payment arrangement, which will see them receiving their pensions through commercial banks. Find out more in this Sandy Ramatar report. That was a scene in front of the Labon Intention Community Center ground as retired employees of the Guyana Sugar Corporation picketed for their rights. The pensioners are dismayed by the attempts taken by the Guyana Sugar Corporation to have their pensions sent to commercial banks. The beneficiaries will now have to go to these banks to collect their pensions. General Secretary of the Guyana Agricultural and General Workers Union, GAU, C. Paul Narain, says the union is dissatisfied with the sugar company's decision, which will take effect in May. While the pensioners were not collectively engaged by the sugar company before the decision was taken, they received payments through their community centre for decades. This is a case where Gaisuku needs to put some other arrangement in place whereby the people could continue to be paid. They have an office right at LBI. And, you know, it's not much money because the pensions are not large sums of money. The aggravated pensioners are strongly opposing the challenge as it places additional burden on them. Some of the senior citizens complained about the challenge in acquiring the necessary prerequisites to obtain a bank account. Others are concerned about the hassles traversed to and from commercial banks given their sickness status. I would like my money to come either sent to here or on the pay office. Me not give up. How long? We got to get me money. The guy either bring him or the guy fetch him. And when we get um, $988, if I got to go in the bank, I got to pay $600 taxi. So why the money go do? What me go eat? Me can't buy medication, you know? So I want to um, see if guys who can do a little better for the people. Um. Me like to get me money right here. Me book 36 era a bag them. Me want sugar case and me have to buy tablet and another dip depend pan. $1,500 I get a week. And me like to get me money right here. And now me get three eight a week. And, and $5,000 you got to get for um, open my bank book. You got to get proof address and everything. When me put on $1,000 for take taxi, when me must get the money for me, want me money here when the week up. And we get all already and the money and I even do for buy ration, not about to, for pay something or buy something or do something. Me want me, me want me little money till me car can come out. We don't have with this at all. Me work on 43 years ago, she come start on 15th of August 1969. I give them all my service. And me start get pension five years now. And me never get a problem like this. This problem I get you now, the pensioners them are grieved. 
Because if you get $600, you got to pay three for taxi and three for taxi, your money done, you got to drive in your pocket. Right? If you're not getting in your pocket, what you going to do? I look over 40 years and leave that money like this. He didn't that pay half his deal. I don't want to go to the bank. I have the bank, look at the fuck it. The bank gets you assigned 40 times. I leave my money like this. Every week, you got to pick you to get the 200. I used to run to the bank every week. Chief man see me. You get enough money at the bank. Let's change the emails. I lost the money like this, man. As such, the union is urging the sugar company to be cognizant of the challenges senior citizens ever so often face. We are hoping, we are hoping that this exercise will open the eyes of some people. And we have some senior government people who are pensioners. No doubt they will have sympathy for them. We are hoping that this will send the right message. Some 800 Gaisuko pensioners will be affected by the payment change come May 2018. Sandy Ramutar, Frame TV's News Update. The town clerk, Royston King, says the council will not be looking for any bailout from central government since the council is an autonomous entity and should not be dependent. Here is more from Yannis Abrams. Town clerk Royston King has re-emphasized that the council will not be asking for any financial help from central government. This comes after King told the mayor and councillors that the council is running low on funds to manage its daily affairs. King mentioned the council is an autonomous agency and should not depend on central government for bailouts. So I'm not in favor of approaching central government for any money. I, don't, I think it's a, it's a bad practice and I think we should wean ourselves off of uh, the, the support of central government. This, uh, the city council is autonomous with enough provision to raise its own monies and it should do that. Last year, the town clerk said the council did not need money from the government. At the time, the council was indebted to the two main solid waste companies Sivon's Waste Management and Purim Brothers Incorporated. In November 2017, during the 2018 National Budget presentation, Minister of Finance Winston Jordan announced that the government will allocate $475 million to the Council. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. Minister of State Joseph Harmon earlier today stressed that the decision to appoint a new chairman of the Ghana Sugar Corporation lies with the government. Here is more from Lashana Gomes Cornelius. According to Minister of State Joseph Harmon, the National Industrial and Commercial Investment Limited, NISIL, and the Special Purposes Unit, SPU, are both government entities that basically holds 50% of state assets. The decision to appoint a new chairman for the Board of Directors of Guy Suko, Minister Harmon says, does not lie with NISIL or the SPU but lies solely with the government. Adding to that, Minister Harmon revealed that during the recent cabinet meeting, the current chief executive officer Paul Beam and the current head of the SPU, Calvin Heath London, were both present at that meeting, where cabinet was given a thorough brief regarding the state of Guy Suko. And so we believe that based on that information which was provided to us, that the cabinet will could uh, cogitate on the matter very seriously and we will get an announcement of a board for Gaisuko in a very short space of time. The company itself is, is being divested, some, some elements are being divested, some elements continue to be there and they are producing and they are functioning. And so that is not a normal situation. So you require people who are competent in sugar who understand the industry, who understand business, who understand the direction which we are going as a country to be able to serve on that board. Further on, Minister Harmon stressed it is government's responsibility to ensure that the state's assets and monies are used in the most cost-effective way possible. Bringing clarity to his pronouncement, Minister Harmon explained that any state entity that has or may in the future borrow monies from the state has to show accountability for such loans. I want to make this point very clear, and that is that as a government, it is our duty, our responsibility to ensure that monies that are spent, the people's money, 
that are spent on any entity whatsoever, that we have value for that money. And that Gaisuko or any other entity which comes to the state for subventions, for money, on a regular basis, will in fact have to account to the people of this country, to their government. So that the question of a board for Gaisuko is not a very simple matter. The entire entity has been reconstructed, reconfigured. And so that there, there are a number of things that are happening at the same time that requires careful analysis and careful thought. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. When we return, judges and prosecutors to receive training to strengthen the region's judicial competence. What good is history if you never change? And what good is change if it doesn't make you better? At Valvoline, for the last 150 years, we've been doing just that. Relentlessly pursuing innovation for your engine. Backed up not just by science, but by the hands-on expertise that drives everything we do. Valvoline, 150 years under the hood. Introducing the new Softex Toilet Tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The choice is clear. Two Softex Toilet Tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. This is MTV News Update. Thank you for staying tuned. Members of the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force Group will be in Guyana to discuss how they can further strengthen the region's judicial competence to prosecute terror-related crimes. Nicol John reports. Guyana will be hosting a workshop for judges and prosecutors from May 2 to 5, 2018. This workshop is a final leg of talks in collaboration with the Commonwealth Secretariat the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force, and the Caribbean Development Bank. The workshop will be hosted at the Pegasus Hotel. Attorney General Basil Williams, during a press conference, said approximately 25 members from CFATF will be attending. He noted that a judge and a prosecutor from each of the countries will be represented, including the Commonwealth Secretary General, Baroness Patricia Scotland, and President David Granger. We conclude with the terrorism, terrorist financing, and violent extremism. And they speak of the role of prosecutors and the judiciary in combating terrorism, terrorist financing, and violent extremism, investigation and prosecution of terrorist financing cases, powers and techniques of law enforcement and prosecutors, 
and targeted financial sanctions. Minister Williams said the participants will focus on how they can further strengthen the anti-money laundering and countering the financing of terrorism. He noted that even though violent terrorism is not in the Caribbean region, the workshop is to assist the judges and prosecutors to get international cooperation. But what we have are what we, they call foreign fighters. And you know, there's a lot, there, there's a lot coming out of Trinidad and in relation to Ghana, over time one or two might have been fingered too. But um, this, this is a question of um, public security and I, I really won't venture too much on that. But thankfully, we haven't had any manifestation in the region of actual um, terroristic action. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The police legal advisor has determined that an inquest will be held following the shooting death of three alleged bandits on the seawall. However, there is no given time for that inquest to be held. Nikhil John, who has more. Acting Commissioner of Police David Ramnarine during an interview says the force has received advice from the police legal advisor pertaining to the seawall shooting. That incident took the lives of three men whom the police claimed were about to commit an armed robbery. Ramnarine says the advisor has determined that an inquest should be held into the fatal shooting of the three alleged bandits. The acting top cop says he does not know when that inquest would be held. However, that process would be done by a magistrate once all documents are submitted. Our role is to ensure that the relevant copies of the file, copies are made and submitted to the authorities and the authorities have the work to do after that. When asked if investigators were able to secure additional evidence from eyewitnesses, the acting top cop said those eyewitnesses were in no show. He noted that there was much fanfare about who witnessed the shooting. Ramnarain says he is pleased that the Office of Professional Responsibilities had taken over the case instead of the Criminal Investigations Department. There might have been uh, insinuations that to send it to some other body or unit in the force might not have been the right thing to do. So I am pleased that it went to the right office, the proper office, and I'm satisfied that the, the advice we have received, that it should go for an inquest, we are satisfied with that advice, and we believe that uh, we will do everything when the inquest would have been held to ensure that the ranks who were involved and so on make themselves available. But until such time, we rest on the advice that we have been given. Three alleged bandits were shot dead on the Kingston Seawall on March 15, 2018. The shooting sparked outcries from various sections of society, casting blame on the conduct in which members of the Guyana Police Force carried out that operation. The force in a statement said, the men posed a security threat after they were trailing a bank customer. Following the shootout, a 9mm pistol along with a magazine containing seven live rounds and four spin shells were recovered. In addition, the police claimed that they found one driver's license, 10 passports, a key used by trunkers, two handcuff keys, a bandana and clothing in the vehicle. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The Ghana Public Service Union is claiming that sweeper cleaners in Region 10 are still being treated unfairly. The union alleges that education officials in that region are not upholding Cabinet's decision on the matter. Here is more. The Ghana Public Service Union, GPSU, believes minimal progress is being made to attend to the concerns of sweeper cleaners. Second Vice President of the GPSU, Don Gardner, said discussions with the Education Ministry ended in September 2017. She said the union left with an understanding that the issues would be carried to Cabinet. Subsequently, Minister of State Joseph Harmon announced that the workers will be regularized from being contracted employees. However, all of the GPSU's request has not been fulfilled. The union is however happy for the breakthrough 
but will contain its representation for the following. That sweeper cleaners must be granted sick leave in keeping with the public service rules. That they must be appointed on the permanent pensionable establishment. That they must be granted vacation leave and allowances in keeping with the public service rules. That they must be paid government minimum wage. Persons who are employed for a number of years and have attained, attained the age of retirement must be paid benefits prior to, for the period of the... Garda mentioned the union has been fighting for the basic benefits due to the sweeper cleaners since 2003. Additionally, the union claims that senior education officials from Region 10 have gone against Cabinet's decision regarding the hours of work allocated to sweeper cleaners. We were told that the our letters that were issued to the super cleaners who have made the decision, we are not, we don't have that information. However, we are trying to meet with the authorities in Region 10, but before we do that, we want to meet with the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Communities, because as you know, the regional um, executive officers all fall under the, the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Communities. So we're going to have his engagement first in the matter. The letters that the super cleaners received were letters from the region, okay. not from, it's, a, it's from the region. Well, that's what we say. We're not sure if it was an Ario's decision, if it was a Redo's decision. All we were told that these super cleaners were, have received letters from the region. And you know, as you know, as public servants receiving letters from the region or from the ministries, it will come from the personnel department. So while the personnel department, someone from the personnel department may have signed the letter, we are not quite sure where the decision came from. The union believes, despite much engagement at the highest level, minimal progress has been made to an agreeable standard. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. Still ahead, GPSU yet to meet with a GGMC over mercury-related illnesses. Stay tuned. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. <gasps> this is amazing! I love your tiles. Make an impression with the finest tiles imported by Lenny. Lens has a huge selection of various towels for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our towels are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily, Monday through Saturday, to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, Feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Just arrived at HomeSense Wholesale and Retail Farm Public Road, a wide design of PVC ceiling panels at the most affordable prices. So be sure to drop by. You can also catch deals on party items, baby care items, household items, footwear for ladies, gents and children, half a sacks, plastic chairs and tables, patio sets, carpets, fans, water dispensers, bicycles, trampolines, bouncy castles and much more. 
HomeSense Wholesale and Retail 31 Track A Farm East Bandamarara is your one-stop shop for everything you need. Telephone numbers 619-8502 or 638-6861. Great Winter News Update, welcome back. The Ghana Public Service Union is upset that it has not been able to reach the top brass of the Ghana Geology and Mines Commission over the mercury emissions. The union believes the GGMC is pussyfooting over such an important matter. Yanis Abrams reports. The burning of gold at the Ghana Geology and Mines Commission on Brick Dam has stopped after 60 staff tested positive for high mercury content in their bodies. The Ghana Public Service Union, which represents several workers at GGMC, has since made requests to meet with the authorities of GGMC. However, according to the second vice president of the union, Don Gardner, the request was in vain. We wrote the commissioner GGMC for a meeting with him to address the matter. And we, so far, we have not been able to meet with him because he suggested that we postpone the meeting. Uh, we're very disappointed with that because the worker's safety should be a priority for any employer. The GPSU representative stated a letter was forwarded to the Minister of Natural Resources, Raphael Trotman, informing him of the issue. On Monday last, GGMC workers refused to work at the Brickdam location after it was discovered that the lab was still burning gold. More workers later fell ill. However, the Ministry of Natural Resources had announced that the lab will be moved to another location in the shortest possible time. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. Lions Club held a career fair on Friday, April 27 to showcase the students at the secondary level the different types of career. Find out more in this report. Lions Club of Durban Park, Georgetown held a career fair on April 27 in an effort to help students at the secondary level to make informed career choices. The fair was held at the Girls Guide Pavilion. President of the Lions Club, Christine Hales, urged the students to take advantage of the fair and to ask questions to ensure they are well informed. Every day we try to do this, to bond our young people, to help them to understand what it means, what it takes, to determine which career you want to follow. Today, the exhibitors here will help you determine which career is the best career. I'm not sure which one was the best for me at your age, but at the end of the day, I evolved into being a human resource practitioner. Lion Donna Trotman expressed her gratitude to all the agencies involved in assisting the Lions Club to make the event possible. For us, Career Fair is a premium event in, the, in our calendar. Therefore, again, on behalf of the president and, and club members, I would like to extend heartfelt gratitude to all the agencies for your support and the passion you demonstrated leading up to today's activity. Our club is eternally grateful. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. Stay tuned for a court roundup of the Ghana Stock Exchange as well as the Demo Harbor Bridge schedule. Gafools proudly presents the perfect block made by the most technologically advanced concrete block making machine in sizes 4 and 6 inches. Perfect because it's the right ratio of cement and sand with sifting added for greater strength. It's stress tested independently by the UG Civil Engineering Department and it's cured for longer life. It's now available at a lower price with a 12.5% discount. The perfect block from Gafools setting a new benchmark. Are you interested in having your home alarm systems monitored and benefit from security response for robbery, medical, or fire emergency? Contact Delta Security on telephone numbers 231-7521 or 231-7522. We offer residential monitoring for $4,000 monthly and commercial monitoring for $6,500 monthly. Sign up now. Benefit from free labor maintenance of your alarm system. Like us on Facebook at Delta Security Services. 
Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Having trouble with your vehicle and can't seem to find your spare parts? Then check out Caribbean Motor Spurs at 174 Zealot Public Road North, East Bank, Essequibo. We stock brands such as Tenacity, Johnson Products, JHF Filters, Coolmax Radiators with Warranty, and so much more. We also do orders for hard-to-find auto parts, so don't hesitate. Come in and meet our experienced and knowledgeable staff or call us on 609-7621 or 630-4394. The circle starts with solid support and a smile. This is real life. With its ups and its downs, this is going the extra mile. And the feeling you get when you can help someone along their journey. Through the twists and turns, we're here. This is Western Union, making sure your support reaches its destination. This is Western Union, moving money for better. Here is what went down at the Georgia Magistrates Court on April 27. on Friday placed before Senior Magistrate Leron Daly charged for attempting to commit a felony. Clifford Rodney, 66, of Savannah Park, New Amsterdam, denied the charge when it was read to him. Particulars of the charge allege that Rodney, between April 24 and April 25 at Avenue of the Republic, attempted to break and enter the store of Albert Ramlikan. The prosecution's facts, read by police prosecutor Sanjay Singh, state that Ramla Khan is the owner of Vijay's fashion building. On April 24, about 17 hours, the man secured his business and left. However, early next morning, he received a phone call from his security alerting him that someone was attempting to break into the store. Upon his arrival at the store, Rodney was caught on the roof of the building attempting to break in. The prosecution objected to bail on the seriousness of the charge and the fact that the defendant was caught red-handed. Magistrate Daly released Rodney on $100,000 bail and adjourned the matter until May 18. Meanwhile, a 48-year-old Albertown resident was on Friday fined $40,000 by Magistrate Liron Daly for obtaining credit by fraud. Fazil Mohammed of Albert Street, Albertown confessed that on April 13 at Thomas Street, South Cumminsburg, he obtained credit to the value of $16,000 from Jason Joseph by fraudulent means. According to the facts read in court by police prosecutor Sanjay Singh, on the day in question, Joseph, who was a minibus operator, was hired by Mohammed to make several stops around Georgetown and would be paid $16,000. However, Singh added when the job was completed, Mohammed left under the pretense that he was going to the bank and withdraw the money but never returned. The magistrate, after considering Mohammed's early guilty plea, ordered him to pay $40,000 fine or serve three weeks in jail. In another case, a vagrant was on Friday sentenced to six months in jail by Magistrate Leron Daly for stealing a weeding machine from the police headquarters. Bernard Anthony admitted that on April 27, at the Guyana Police Force headquarters, Evilary, he stole a weeding machine valued $180,000 property of the Guyana Police Force. Anthony told the court that he would clean the headquarters kitchen and surroundings and in return he was given food. He added that on a day in question he saw the old weeding machine and picked it up. He said, and I quote, I pick up the machine and put it on my bicycle but the thing was so old that it fall apart. The magistrate after listening to Anthony sentenced him to six months jail. Kepani Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update.
The Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 770. Let's turn our attention to the Denver Harbor Bridge schedule. Your weekly entertainment guide is next. Stay with us. Eh eh, BB is way going with so much Windex for clean windows. All them fancy curtains, it's not even Christmas. Hi girl, mind your own business. I got big plans. But BB, your house don't even have windows. Eh hey, girl, you ain't think I know it ain't got windows? Yes, I know it ain't got windows. But look, Mokesh promised me that he carried me he down by the window factory when he come home at Eccles. It named Beeson. Like you know nothing, girl. Right now, everybody talking about how Beeson got the strongest windows. Plus, they got a deal right now. If you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. So I could mind new business instead of you minding me own. Beeson Windows and Doors. Serving Guyana with the highest quality standard windows for your home, office, or commercial building. A pleasant good evening viewers and welcome to this week's edition of MTV News Update Entertainment Guide. We begin with Digicel Triple Treat the Korean After Show competition that's all set for this Sunday at the Anime Giant Community Center Ground. 
Hi, thank you so much for coming, Rajesh. I know you guys always check up on when we have duck curry and triple treat. Well, this weekend, it's Estipable. We will be there at Anna Regina Community Center Ground, where we will be pulling off our third annual triple treat event. That means stage show, free stage show, free softball competition, and free curry duck competition where we're giving away over 1.9 million in cash and prizes for persons participating both in the softball semi-finals and finals and the curry duck competition. Let's start with the curry duck competition. How much persons are just Well, we have 20 persons. That's our limit. We usually cater for 20 persons a year and the first 20 that register, that's the first 20 that gets into the competition. So we're hoping for some good curry duck in Essequibo and some good solid competition because everybody's gearing up and ready for that competition. And the judging criteria? Well, the judging criteria is um, we have five impartial judges and they look for smell, which is aroma, taste, texture, and all these things that comes with the, with the curry. And also we have a category for best presentation. <laughs> We have the curry duck competition and the cricket competition as well. Tell us about the after show. Well, the after show is going to be, for want of a better word, off the hook because um, we know that um, persons in Essex will look forward to this event and it's a free, let's say, concert we're putting on, a free show where we're going to have Adish Samaru. Everybody knows Adish. We don't have to explain and say who he is, um, the Vika Ramkisun, and we have Jomo Rabaway's promo who always hypes up the crowd and gets people going. If you have seen the um, stage show, at 63 Beach how it is with the crowd and the participation and the hype and the lights and the stage and the sound and everything it's just going to be a full on free concert and as we continue with the entertainment guide Bollywood playback singer Atif Aslam will be performing live at the National Stadium on May 1st I caught up with Dr. Vindya Prasad who told us about this event I think Guyana can look forward to a fantastic concert because what I've heard from the organizers who are bringing him to Guyana and around to the other countries is that a lot of his concerts are sold out. So I'm hoping that Guyanese will be motivated and hyped to come out in their numbers so that they can enjoy something that will be unforgettable. Because Atif Aslam clearly cuts across the boundaries and people of all ages find his music very appealing and he has something for everyone because he sings the romantic Bollywood numbers he also sings some upbeat very youthful numbers he was into pop when he started so he still does that he does Sufi he does Kavali and he has a segment where he does oldies so it's going to be a well-rounded performance from Atif Aslam he plays the guitar he plays the piano he and with his band as well? he's coming with a team of musicians including a pianist a violinist and other musicians he comes with a technical team so they'll be doing light and sound along with travelers song our local person here so it's going to be you know something that's fantastic Dharmic Richie Sang will be performing so I think when people come they can prepare for hours of entertainment because one of the things we have at our shows the artist the main artist is on for a long time Shining in the sailing sun like a pearl upon the ocean Come and feel me, oh heal me Waisa to man mera pehle bhi raaton mein Hak zari chaat ke haan and one of the things I like to tell fans and people who are coming to the show, the artist feeds off the energy of the audience. So a rapport will develop depending on how the, the, the fans, the crowd reacts. So I would like people to dance. I would like them to sing. I would like them to respond because the trend is that they might sing a line or two and then they put the mic out there to the audience. And then, you know, if they know that people know their songs and they love them, then it, it motivates them to give more and do more. I don't think that would be an issue for him because most of his latest songs he played throughout the What? Let me turn this back in you. Movie. What's the favorite song of yours of Atif Aslam? It's from the movie um, Tigers in the Gideon. Dildi Agalla. Well, he definitely will be singing that. And I think the newest song from the movie side is Osati from the film Bagi 2 and that's tearing And I also caught up with Tinti Soka artist Kes who gave us an update on his upcoming performance during Guyana's first carnival. Um, we are going to be coming with Tuesday Rocks which is our concert that we do in Trinidad 
um, which is a full, full, full concert performance from Kesti Band. But what we as well do is that we infiltrate wherever the place that we're at, you know, Guyana is a very special place to us, so we want to include um, Guyana, you know, Guy Guyanese acts um, as well to the culture, the vibes, and include it and combine it with Kesti Man and what we good at. Um, and it's on a Tuesday, May the 22nd is a Tuesday, Tuesday in the Rocks, just like in Trinidad, so I'm excited. Now you're coming from the home of Carnival, what's your thoughts on Guyana having the first Carnival? I think it's about time, I think um, Guyanese the Guyanese culture is part here as well too, you know, just they, they, they've been practicing for a long time for this and I think that um, the carnival itself, the carnival culture are, is growing right around the world. Um, as we see, we see Jamaica carnival has grown ex exponentially for the last five years. We've seen carnivals in place, places as far as Berlin, all over the world. Ghana is a great stop and it's an amazing stop. In terms of your music, tell us what you're working on currently. Um, right now we just... We just creating music and creating singles. We're coming off of a, on a very successful carnival season, so there's still a lot of rolling out doing with the music. Um, summertime is a big time for us as well, but I guess I just haven't stopped production. I just kind of like going with the flow and the flow of things. Great. Yeah. Go ahead and give us a sample of one of your recent songs. All right. Sweet type of love. Sweet type of love. I give you that sweet type of love. Guyana. Sweet type of love. Hold me, darling. Give it to me, that workout. Give me the workout, baby. Show them that you're not lazy. Ooh, girl, I'm gazing. Looking at you is amazing. Gym body, gym body. Now give it to nobody. Gym oh, body, gym body. Original, let me photocopy. Oh, bless. And that's what we have for you in this week's edition of the Entertainment Guide. As always, I'm Rajesh Lack and encourage you to have fun and be safe. Well, that's all we have for you in our newscast tonight, but before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. Single-use plastics to be banned by 2021. Three cops transferred following a compromised theoretical driving examination. Fisher folks must not dock boats at the Hope Relief Outfall Channel of Firms Minister Holder. And in court, a vagrant gets a six months for stealing a weeding machine from the Guyana Police Force. Remember to join us online on MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be rebroadcasted later tonight at 23 hours and at 6 hours 30 on Saturday, April 28th. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I am Ashley Scotland, thanking you for watching. Do have a safe and productive weekend. Good night.